going on guys? Welcome back to RC Everyday. Looking at building another rat rod. I've had some issues here lately getting into the mood to custom build again. Um, it's been a little while since we built the rat rod. I've kind of come to the conclusion that's from two reasons. One, I feel pressured to. Everybody expects me to keep building rat rods, keep building rat rods. And, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things you just gotta, you gotta have the idea and it's got to be good enough to create the drive. I don't have just unlimited creativity just sitting around in a bucket I can dump on myself and get to work. These things I have to really have a vision and kind of put my heart into it. So that's kind of why things have been slow. Things have been so rough at work and all that stuff. I've barely been able to work on videos, trying to work on the house and all that. But um, I forgot what the second reason was now. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, step one's already been completed. This is how I start these builds. I've got all these parts just laying around. And I just, I don't know. I've been trying to make myself do things that I'm not really interested in. Um, I've got those, this body's been on those rails up there on the rack. And they're beautiful rails and it's, they're traditional like 32 rails. And I've been, I've reincarnated the gasser at least two or three times, maybe more with this body and I just I can't get into it I don't like I like those kind of traditional style hot rods but it's not me and I can't put in the effort and the passion into it to make that work so we're gonna go back to the old ways and I really want to use this body it's been weathered for a couple years now and I haven't had a permanent home for it so this is what I've pieced together so far I've got the 3d printed flathead V8, yes it's a V8, they had three exhaust ports per side, looks like a six, I'm not going to argue with people on the internet. Um, I don't know that I'm going to use that, that 3D print, the header broke already, I painted it a long time ago, I haven't weathered it or anything. Um, I may steal the scale V8 off of the mud truck that's not finished because again, it's not slammed on the ground so I wasn't really interested in building it as much as I have been about other things. But that's all to be determined. I've got another R4 transmission here. And we're going to use that. These wheels and tires were sent to me by Cammie. She got one of those uh, Eagle Moss Jeep Willys. And I've used them for mock-ups and stuff. Uh, she's making a full rat rod out of it with duels and all kinds of stuff. So she sent me some little odds and ends from that kit, which are fantastic. Um... Those wheels are all metal. It's not the highest quality metal, but it's enough to work. And I've already modified them and made them work on RC axles. And uh, the tires are very hard, so this may be a dirt car or a drifter. But uh, the look is right. It's a tall steel wheel. They, they look like multi-piece wheel, uh, you know, bias supply kind of hard as a rock tires with an inner tube kind of deal. The stance and the look, I'm digging. So... Uh, I've got, you can't really see it because the tires, the uh, old, old, original prototype, awesome designs, tractor grill. And I have a little Mac Bulldog sitting on there, but got that and I have the headlights from that Willys Eagle Moss kit on there as well. <clears throat> so this is how I start. I make the, the stance, I get the look. I like the skinny tire. I've wanted this body to be on the ground. I love it when these coupes and the tire sticks up over the trunk. It's just cool. Um, that was another thing that was giving me issues with the, trying to make the gassers. I wanted the rear to be leaf sprung. And no matter how I sorted out the leaf springs and flipped the axle and added spacers and all that, it just never set right. And the tires and stuff that I had didn't flow with the proportion. And I wasn't able to find any other smaller slicks. And it was just the just wasn't working out. So I think the gassers dead officially. I'm never going to do it. I do have plans to take those rails. and Because that... I bought that chassis and that roller from someone. Uh, the rails are beautiful. They're welded a little wider than I build with. So it completely threw all my way of thinking and engineering out the door because the chassis is probably five mils wider. So that put all my mounting points for the suspension underneath the rail as opposed to outside the rail. So I am going to cut that down. Uh, cut it back in half. Cut the two cross members out. And uh, clean it all up. And just set those aside and we'll figure out a use for them eventually but once we can uh 
repurpose them and make them the width that I build things out of, which is pretty much a standard Trailfinder 2 width because all the drivetrain stuff I use is basically RC four-wheel drive. The Tamiya semi front ends, they're set up for leaf sprung, you know, from the on the kits, and it all works together with the RC four-wheel drive way of thinking is how I view it. But you can see I've got that other body back there, the three window. I love that body, but I have yet to find a purpose for that as well because that has a full floor. It has the rear, the trunk area is actually solid 3D print. So that thing's like three quarters of an inch thick back there. So it really limits how low I can get things. The rear axle diff won't fit up in there far enough. And I've already cut on it some and I've, I just need to stop and put that aside for now. Um, I don't know, like again, the full floorboard doesn't fit with my way of thinking because I can't channel it down as low like this one is setting here. So, we're gonna do it the old school way, the messy, long chassis way. Uh, first thing I've gotta do, I've gotta do some thinking here on the rear. It is gonna have to be a four link, very short four link, and I've gotta figure out how to engineer that. I've got some things here for this kit. I've got basically everything I need. We've got a Yoda 2 axle in here. <clears throat> it's never been used for anything other than mock-up. And we've got the uh, custom CNC drop axle for the Tamiya semi trucks. Those I get on eBay, they're about 50 bucks, but it's all shiny machined aluminum. I've got links on that already. I don't know how long those were. I may change them out, but um, yeah, we're going to make links for the rear and I've got to find a four link truss. I think I have a set of those. I, I buy those four link and three link kits for the Trailfinder 2 because that's comes with so many things so many valuable parts I think they're about 35 40 bucks but you get a, a four link truss you get rods rod ends all the hardware a lot of varying different sizes of stuff so it's very handy when you're doing custom builds I you know, I first started building these I built it all out of spare parts I had laying around from rigs that I'd done and redone 15 times so I had a, a stash of everything but I've run out of all the little things like that so I have to buy them and in ways like that to uh, try to keep some on hand. But I'm digging the wheelbase. Uh, you don't see many five windows or three windows with the suicide front axle, but this low, it's that's the way it's gotta be. There's just no way around it. Um, the main thing we always struggle with is uh, front steering, where to mount the servo. And for the servo, I've got a awesome Reefs 99 Micro. And I have an aluminum horn for that somewhere over here. And I have an actual mount for it. I don't know if there's going to be room for that. Depends on what we do on the front suspension. <clears throat> front suspension on this kind of build. The rear always, you know, a little triangulated four link. Looks cool, but you're not going to see it. We've got a trunk. So the front is kind of the showpiece. I really want to do something like I, I did recently on the Westmade Peterbilt rat rod that we were doing. Which I still haven't finished either. <laughs> but, uh... It has a uh, inverse leaf with shackles and everything and a small little pan hard bar. Cramming all that stuff on the front of one of these is tough. So we we'll see how it plays out. Uh, these radius arm style front ends, they just work. Uh, you can throw a one mil spacer underneath your rod ends and it pulls your radius arms out just a hair and that kind of triangulates. It still allows you side to side movement independent but it keeps it centered and it just just a magical thing, the way it works. But enough talking, I gotta design a chassis. Um, I've got my half inch square steel tube. This is stuff I just get at Home Depot. It's nothing fancy, it's just mild steel. And we're gonna lay it out. And I gotta measure where I'm gonna step up the front. The front is gonna step up just a half inch. And the rear is just gonna have something come up so we can mount all of our links to it, keep our four link and our axle, our pinion angle good. And then we'll worry about rear shocks. Another thing I've got, RC four wheel drive, these are expensive. These are like $35 a pair. They've got these new 50 and 60 millimeter Bilsteins and they are awesome. I have a bunch of the 50s mounted on something that I can't show you but we've got some 60s here and we'll pull some of those 50s off if we need them. Hoping that will be a nice, simple, small shock. Really nice looking. We're not gonna put the Bilstein stickers on it. Just, just leave them all shiny. You gotta have a little bit of shine on your rat rod. So I'm gonna turn the fan back on because it is the heat of summer and 
I'm going to crank the music up. We'll do some high speed stuff and get to work.
All right, guys. So the chassis is made. I like this step. This is my favorite part we're going to do next. Um, I do this every time I built one. I take one of these pictures for Instagram where I have it kind of laid out, blown apart. But the holes that I drilled in the chassis, I just eyeballed roundabout where I think the link mounts need to be. Put a couple extra here and there for cross members or four link rod tubes to be the easiest way to uh, brace this up. Um, but yeah, that actually came out really good. I took my time cutting the chassis rails. Still not perfect. Um, it's just no way to do that. I went through about three or four Dremel bits and realized I'm out, of course, the larger cutoff wheels. So ended up using the big grinder, which is a lot less accurate. But we cleaned it up and everything is jiving good. It's nice and smooth. Um, I got a little bit of weld splatter on the inside I need to remove so it doesn't interfere with anything I'm bolting on. But that's it for this episode. Next one, we're going to start again my favorite part. All the engineering that goes into making all the suspension and stuff work, making this sit the height I want, mounting the motor and transmission, getting them located where we need them, and getting the drive line angles and stuff right, making again making the four link function and it's a little bit more challenging when the rods are short. You got your SCX 10s and stuff and you got the long four link. And it's not as difficult. It's easy to triangulate it and stuff, but when your rods are an inch or less, it's uh it's a little bit more work. I've got some small pieces like these are threaded. I think these are where's the number? 15 millimeter threaded rods. So you can vary how long your arm is. You can use short rod ends, long rod ends. You can add spacer here and there. Um, typically, I, I like to do like a 40 mil rod. I think it's 40. I'd be a 20. No, it's a 40. Uh, they work out really well. Use all four 40s, short rod ends, but I don't know if we're going to have the space on this. We're going to have to get the chassis together and uh, get the rear axle centered where I want it with the body. Start looking at body mounts. Um, once we get the, the axle where we need it and see how far we make the four link well we got to put the truss on and everything and then we start looking at shock mounts and all the stuff that goes along with it so it's been a long day of work i'm gonna wrap this up part one part two probably be here pretty soon because i'm not going to work tomorrow we're shut down so i've got a whole day to rc engineer but keep it scale guys see y'all in the next video